Throughout history, there have been countless unexplainable stories, events, and moments captured on audio. These horrifying tapes were archived, never to be heard again. Until now. These are the tapes of trepidation. Tape number 13, What Lurks in Your Vents. I heard it on that first night. I was lying there when I heard the slightest sound of shuffling. I didn't think much of it and went to sleep. I heard the shuffling again. This time, though, I followed the noise with my ears. It sounded like it was coming from right on top of me, then moved to the east of me. I thought nothing of it, thinking it was likely just the air conditioning and shrugged it off. As soon as the shuffling started on the second night, I immediately sat up to try and focus on hearing it a bit better. As soon as I got up, the shuffling stopped, and all I could hear were crickets from outside. But as soon as I'd lay back down, it started again. At this point, I got freaked out. But to keep myself sane, I just shrugged it off as my imagination, or just the air conditioning acting up again. When the shuffling started again on that same night, I pretended that I was asleep. I didn't move at all and added soft snoring to be more convincing. The shuffling would seem to slowly make its way to the east of me, stopping for a moment. I heard my closet door slowly creep open. That was the signal for me to haul ass out of there. While running out of the room, for a split second, I glanced back toward the closet, which was opened only a few inches wide. I couldn't see anything in the room. It was completely pitch black. I spent the night in the living room on a couch. I thought I was going insane, and the only way to know if I was or not would be to find out for myself. Tonight, I waited and waited. As soon as I heard a noise, I pulled out a flashlight that I had hidden under my pillow. I saw something looking forward towards the closet. Then slowly, it turned to face me, smiling as it did so. Its face looked so old and wrinkly, almost like a mummy. After what felt like a full minute of us just staring at each other, me about to scream. That thing suddenly started crawling towards me at an alarming speed, while making an otherworldly sounding grunt as it did so. I was so frozen in fear that I was shaking. As it reached me, I finally snapped back into consciousness and threw my flashlight right at its forehead. This didn't hurt it, but it did stagger it a little. I was able to make it out of my room and shut the door behind me to slow it down. While I ran to another room and locked the door behind me, I put my ear against the door to try and listen for where that thing was. Suddenly, it slammed right into the door, desperately trying to open it. I shouted, My parents are going to hear you and they'll slaughter you! Almost right when I said this, it got completely quiet. Then the otherworldly voice started saying, You don't realize it, but I already gave your parents a visit tonight. They can't save you now. I cried as it walked away. 
I know it's making its way through the vents to the room where I'm in. I shine the flashlight one more time in the room's vent. I never cared for air conditioning. It's unnecessary when the cool air from outside on a chill night could easily remedy any heat-induced discomfort. Everyone is so degenerate nowadays. They don't remember their beginning. What made them powerful and ahead of all others on the food chain? Once upon a time, a simple fire at the base of the cave was enough to quench their ancestors' basic comfort necessities. Why is everything so convenient? Allowing basic survival instincts to diminish within their DNA. Pushing them further down the fruit chain. When and if there comes a time, they shall part with their precious technology. Because of laziness within society, I am forced into an uncomfortable environment. I, more often than not, stay up late. Shivering because my family decided to turn that damned air conditioner on. Every rustle I hear from the ventilation, every breeze I feel upon my face as it glides through the countless metal tunnels of the house, angers me. I don't know whether to bail from the situation or power through my discomfort. Continuing to be the hero in the shadows. But every night, every God damn tonight, they turn the air on, causing me to rethink my decision to protect them. I mean, don't they know I live here? How rude of them to impose such conditions on me, after all I've done for each and every one of them. I watch over these people I consider family, ensuring they are safe from shadowy figures looking within the darkened house. I am their protector, and they don't even appreciate me. With every passing night as I watch them toss and turn in their comfortable beds, clinging onto the blankets they've securely wrapped themselves within, I grow envious. I don't wish to be this way, but it's so damned cold. Even when I fight off the others, betraying my bloodline as they attempt to harm my so-called family, I cannot shake the wavering cold from my body. I love these people. I really do. But I cannot stay if they do not turn their air conditioners off. My body was created to withstand heat, not cold. Even if they were to compromise with me, turning it up a mere degree or three, I would be satisfied. But they are unwilling. It's not like I can ask them to turn it down. My people are forbidden to touch things in this realm. We only feast on the dreams and induced nightmares for an added treat. Quenching our appetites for the night. I don't want to be selfish. But I starve myself century after century. Battling my own kind to ensure my family's safety. And they don't even care that my ribcage protrudes from my gaunt torso. 
They don't get to see my hollow cheekbones concave and sunken from years of starvation. They only see sweet dreams as I lick my imaginary lips, visualizing how filling it would be to just get a taste of their dreams. Unfortunately, my sacrifice goes unnoticed. So, this leads me to believe my work here has depleted. Maybe I should go. Maybe I should retire from invention and work within the shadows as my family has done for millennia. Maybe I should become the predator I was raised to be. I mean, they are at the bottom of the food chain. That counts. This has been tape number 13, What Lurks in Your Vents, by the Tapes of Trepidation Horror Narration Podcast. The first story featured in this episode was Shuffling in the Vents, and was written by an anonymous author, and was originally posted on the Creepy Pasta Wiki. The second story featured in this episode was It's So Cold. Written by Grey Owl and was originally posted on the Creepy Pasta Wiki. Music featured in this episode was by Thrill, with a link to their YouTube channel in the show notes. Narration, production, and sound design for this episode was by TJ Hodder. The Tapes of Trepidation theme was written by the incredible J.M. Scherf. All logos, banners, overlays, and graphic design work was provided by the talented Jason Reese from Jaybird Digital Arts. If you have a story you would like to submit or a question regarding the show, please contact us at tapesoftrepidationpodcast at gmail.com. Support the show by subscribing and leaving a rating on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, your favorite podcatcher app, or leave a like on YouTube. Be sure to tell your friends Word of mouth is extremely helpful to a new podcast like this one. Check us out on social media through the link tree in the show notes. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. And if you'd like to support the show a little more, receive access to monthly bonus narrations and the behind-the-scenes podcast within the archive in which I do a deep dive into what went into making each episode of the show, consider joining the Taped of Trepidation Patreon at the tier that best fits you. Come join us and become trapped within the archive. All content used on Tapes of Trepidation is either original, used with permission, or is available on your Creative Commons share alike license. All rights reserved, unless otherwise stated. This podcast and its content may not be redistributed or rebroadcasted without the express written consent of Tapes of Trepidation and the story's author. Thank you so much for listening.